Okay. I'm gonna talk about the movie that scared me the most when I was little. I'm gonna do another one of these about the movie that scares me the most now. That one's gonna be a treat for everyone. Cause I'm gonna get freaked out for checking behind me for stuff. Oh, that's my bed. What's that in the corner there? But it's my bed. I'm an idiot. But the movie that scared me the most when I was a little kid was Stephen King's Rose Red. Now, I don't even remember why it scared me so bad. I think I've repressed, 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 blah, 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 blah. English, English come out of my mouth. Repressed it because I was so scared by it. My mom said I was so scared by it that I wouldn't look in the mirror for weeks. And she's probably, she's most likely not wrong. I'm not gonna lie. Probably didn't. I'm that much of a jumpy child. Or what? Well, I just let that out on the internet. Okay, I'm jumpy. Leave me alone. Not sorry. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna read it because I don't remember half of what happened in this movie. It was like ten, over ten years ago that I watched this. It was like twelve years ago, I don't know. No, it couldn't have been twelve, I don't know. It was over ten years ago. Dr. Joyce Reardon, <laughs> that's a name. That's, it's literally spelled R-E-A-R-D-O-N, Reardon. <laughs> His surname is horrible, I'm sorry. Um, an unorthodox university pro psychology professor leads a team of psychics to the massive and unantiquated, antiquated, Seattle mansion known as Rose Red in an attempt to record data which would constitute scientific proof of paranormal phenomenon. So, a psychology professor brings psychics, psychics, don't believe in psychics, believe in prophets, don't, I don't believe, I don't believe in psychics, sorry, I just, I don't but brings psychics to a haunted mansion in Seattle to try and prove, scientifically prove, ghosts. I have that right. That's the first sentence. That is the first sentence. This is going to be a wild ride of me compl stopping, complaining, and, and going again. The mansion is publicly thought to be haunted. Oh, really? Why else would she be going there to try to document paranormal phenomenon? Phenomenon. Whatever. Why would you be going there to capture paranormal evidence if it wasn't supposedly haunted? That'd just be stupid! As at least 23 people have either disappeared or died there and the interior of the house appears to change or increase in size. What does that have to do with the 20 pe 23 people that have died there? I, I might be, my brain might be misinterpreting it, but that should not belong in the same sentence together. Or died there in the interior. Or not. Okay, look. It's a, it's a full sentence. It's a run-on sentence. The mansion is publicly thought to be haunted, comma, as at least 23 people have either died or disappeared there, and the interior of the house appears to change or increase in size. Now, um, being as I'm going to major in English, when I start classes come January, 
um, that should not be a full sentence. Um, you, you should, should, the comma should stay where it is. You should have a period after died there, cut out the end, and say the interior of the house appears to change or increase in size. English lessons, guys. English lessons. If you ever need someone to tell you what you did wrong on an essay, I'm here. I'm here for that. I'm majoring in that. Reardon's team. I'm not. Uh, oh, every time I every time I read it, Reardon Reardon's team <laughs> unleashes the spirit of the house, leading to several deaths and the revelation of the mansion's secrets. Ooh, Dimension has- the house has secrets, guys. It has secrets. Secrets. <laughs> okay. The- the mansion has secrets. I know what that means. I, I do. I know what it means. But come on. The- the revelation of the mansion's secrets. I would have said the mansion's past, or like, the secret, the revelation of the secrets in the mansion, not the mansion's secrets. Is it, wait, unless, is the mansion, the, the spirit of the house, oh the mansion is alive. Forget I was making fun of that. Rose Red was built in 1906 by a wealthy oil man. John Rimbarer and his what? Uh-uh, no demons. None of that. I will get the salt. There's a reason there's a supernatural poster above my bed. For his wife, Ellen. Rimbar used much of his wealth to build a mansion which is a Totoro Gothic style and situated on 40 acres, 160,000 mi square miles of woodland in the heart of Seattle on the site of a Native American burial ground. It's always an Indian burial ground. It's never not an Indian burial, 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 burial ground. Yeah, I know, I know, the technical term is Native American. Leave me alone. My great-grandmother was 75% Native American. Or was she full-blooded? Yeah, yeah. But neither my mom or I look it. Again, I say, I'm as wide as my shirt. I'm almost as wide as my shirt. I'm serious. That's, it's sad. Anyway. But it's always on a Native American burial ground. How, how are you so stupid? You don't deserve, you don't, de you do not disturb the spirits ever. This is why people in horror movies are so stupid. It pains me. This is why I don't watch horror movies that much. That's why I read the books. It pains me. How can you people be this stupid? I can scream at the book without getting judged in the comfort of my own room. But if I start screaming at the TV, my mom asks me what I'm doing. Because she, she, she hears the movie. Not like she doesn't scream at horror movies either. Cry. Anyway, the house was rumored to be cursed even as it was being construct constructed. Did. Constructed. English words come out of my mouth. Stop stuttering, you tard. Yeah, I can't redeem myself after that one. Three construction workers were killed on the site, and a construction foreman was murdered by a co-worker. On the site? On the site. Was he murdered on the site? Because if it, if, 
if he wasn't. That has nothing to do with the plot line. I'm just saying, it really doesn't. While honeymooning in Africa, Ellen fell ill from an unspecified STD given to her by her husband, most likely herpes. Okay. So, he didn't get tested for that. And made an acquaintance of Shukina, a local tribeswoman. The two women became very close while Shukina nursed Ellen back to health and she accompanied the room bars back to the newly completed Rose Red. The room bars had two children, Adam and April, born within a withered arm. Born with a withered arm. April, born with a withered arm. Okay, got it. But Ellen quickly became unhappy with her marriage to her philandering philandering and neglectful husband. Deaths and mysterious disappearances became more commonplace at the house. One of John Wimbar's friends died of a bee sting in the solarium. While his business partner whom Rimbar had cheated out of his share of the oil company's profits, hung himself in front of the children! Oh my god, no! 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 No, 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 no! That's traumatizing! What's wrong with you? I swear, I'm gonna cry because of that. That's why I'm gonna cry. That That's why I'm gonna cry. Children should never have to walk in a room and find a dead body. Okay? Okay. This is what gets me with suicide. It's technically, kind of sort of one of the reasons it's not an option for me ever. I don't want a child coming in the room and finding my dead body and traumatizing them for life because I'm dead. But no, no, you don't. You do not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? But that's no. No. I. D no, you do not. Children should not have to deal with dead bodies. Okay? Okay. Six year old April also disappeared in the house. Oh no! The baby disappeared! And Sukina was tortured by the police after being suspected for her murder. Well, you're nice. John appeared to commit suicide by throwing himself from up an upper window. Well, um, that, is that gonna be a trend in this? Is suicide gonna be a trend? Because if it is, I don't want to read the rest of this. But I'm going to anyway, as I said I was gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. There's a lot of reading left. I have to find where I was now. Blip, bloop, 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 down, 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 boop. Okay. Oh, in parentheses, after throwing himself off an upper window, from an upper window, not off an upper window. How do you throw yourself off a window, guys? Someone tell me, because apparently I think it can happen. Although viewers of the miniseries later learn that he was murdered by uh, Ellen and Sukina. So in the movie, he throws himself off the 
or out of the, from the window. And in the mini series, his wife kills him, so that's nice. Ellen and Sakina continue to live in the house after John's death. After a spiritualistic seance, Ellen came to believe that if she continued to build and expand the house, she would never die. Oh, oh, I understand. I understand this movie so bad. Oh, oh, I understand. The Haunting, uh, it's a movie with Owen Wilson in it. This movie, basically, it's basically a ripoff of Rose Red. Is it? I don't know. I'll have to look at the time frames. Uh, she never die. Again, yawning. She used nearly all of her husband's fortune to continue at, continually add to the home over the next several decades, enlarging it significantly. Okay, thank you for that. The mysterious disappearances continue to occur. However, both Ellen and Sukina eventually disappeared in Rose Red. They dis they disappeared, guys. I don't know where they went. <laughs> For several years after Ellen disappeared, I oh, don't look at me. I'm yawning. For several for nah, nah, nah. for several years after Ellen's disappearance, only servants occupied Rose Red. Adam, who inherited the house, lived there for a short time with his wife. Ever 